what's going on YouTube this is your boy the Soul City Sigma aka Austin just doing another update on this uh, stromal puncture recurrent corneal erosion deal as promised I am now about five days after the stromal puncture uh, in the first video if you're following along with this, you'll know that I was uh, I was less than 24 hours in when I recorded that first video. Um, we are now five days in, just about, and I do have a follow-up appointment on Thursday, and my well, which is, you don't know what day it is. I do have a follow-up appointment in two days, which will be seven days after the surgery. And I had a follow-up appointment. The first follow-up appointment was on the day after. And the doctor said everything looked good. And we are now looking at another one two days from now. Everything looks good. Everything feels good. I have not had any erosion and I believe that this stromal puncture is going to be a success. My eye just feels more like it did before I sustained that eye injury than it has since I began having recurrent corneal erosions. So again things are looking up. The only problems I've had uh, after about the third day was uh, I've had a bit of irritation in certain parts of the eye and today in particular really all I had was just a lot of dryness. I never really had that that scratchy feeling that I had been having. Uh, I had a lot of dryness and my eye just feels kind of tired. I think that's because I do have a bandage contact lens in and I know that when you wear these bandage contact lenses uh, they can sort of make your eye feel like they've been through a little bit of a workout so I think that's what's going on there so I do want to mention a few other things just uh, FYI for people uh, this is mostly dealing with my experience and then with uh, things that I have read First of all, in case anybody is wondering, I sustained my recurrent corneal erosion due to trauma of the cornea that previously happened. Uh, there are two main ways where you can sustain recurrent corneal erosion from what I'm reading. Now, I do uh, encourage you to follow up behind me and do your own research because I'm not a doctor. I'm just a patient. But there are two ways that you can get recurrent corneal erosion, and that is through a pre-existing condition like some sort of dystrophy that they have that can affect the cornea, or the other thing uh, that can cause recurrent corneal erosion, which is how I sustained it, was through corneal trauma. About two weeks before I had my first erosion, I had injured my cornea, gotten a corneal abrasion from taking a tennis ball straight to the eye while playing tennis. Uh, the corneal abrasion was very painful as you can imagine, but I I healed from that really within about three or four days, just that the doctor at the time had told me, you know, the cornea is going to heal pretty quickly. Uh, from this abrasion and after those four days with the original abrasion I thought that it was over I thought that things would heal and the doctor just told me be careful because you can re-injure it when I first started having the erosions which was again about two to three weeks later I really thought I had re-injured the eye because I had my first one and it was sort of an isolated event and uh so I thought I re-injured the eye and it felt better that day actually and so I was like well that was nothing probably nothing to worry about and then I started having recurrent erosions afterwards uh, several times a week 
uh, that was probably a little less a little more than a month after the original injury the original abrasion so I say that to say that there are going to be different methods of healing involved if you have the dystrophy or that pre-existing condition than if you got the recurrent corneal erosion from an eye trauma like I did. So stromal puncture was best for me because I had a, trauma a traumatic situation to my eye, but it may not be the best situation for you. Consult with your doctor. Also, I want to encourage people to definitely wear protective eyewear when playing sports because if you've never been through recurrent corneal erosion and you are somehow just happening upon my video for some other reason, I do want to let you know that this is nothing you want to catch. They pretty much require you in schools to wear safety goggles when you're doing science experiments so I don't see why they don't require you to protect your eyes when you are playing sports. Uh, 600,000 people a year in America visit emergency rooms due to sports related injuries uh, to the eye. So it's definitely something that can happen and you you need to protect yourself, you need to protect your eye. I got that statistic by the way from a graphic that is at the eye doctor's office so I don't know if it's truly accurate or not but uh, if that's a point of debate for you then you probably should take it up with your eye doctor. Anyway I'm just saying wear protective eyewear, freak accidents happen and nothing was worth the pain that I've endured through these recurrent corneal erosions so you know, take care of yourself out there, uh, YouTube, and don't be an idiot like me and play tennis uh, bare-eyed and take a tennis ball to the eye and wind up paying for it for three months. And I'm very fortunate, by the way, that I have only, hopefully, knock on wood, dealt with this for only three months. Uh, some people actually don't get their first erosion until months or years after the original trauma. I was very fortunate in getting my erosion starting uh, less than a month later, so it was very fast and easy to diagnose. So I'll probably again do another video after the follow-up uh, visit to the doctor in two days. But uh, things are looking good, and I have faith that I have finally turned a leaf here, and things are getting better. Oh, I do want to also mention that I have been taking, on top of what I mentioned in the first video, I've been using a antibiotic, and I've been using a uh, pain relieving drop, prescription drop that the doctor prescribed me. In addition to that, I've been using doxycycline, which you should study up on. Uh, doxycycline is a prescribed uh, antibiotic that also helps with healing the cornea. It's a side effect, interestingly enough. And if your doctor prescribes doxycycline for you, I highly recommend that you take it and that you... Um, follow the directions for proper use of doxycycline because man that stuff actually I noticed a very small improvement in my condition once I started taking the doxycycline but every little bit helps it it didn't do the job by itself but it definitely helped and I'm continuing to take it and I think it's going to continue to help facilitate this healing process I've also been taking artificial tears Make sure you take your artificial tears. Don't let your eye dry up because that can um, sort of, you know, facilitate an erosion happening. So, 
you know, if you can get a hold of some artificial tears, preservative free artificial tears, go ahead and use those and don't be lazy in using them. Use them four, five, six times a day and whenever your eye feels a little dry, go ahead and use them. Okay, so that's it for now, uh, YouTube. Thank you. And if you have any questions, just drop me a line in the comment section below.